Well, good afternoon, good evening, and a very, very exuberant and joyous welcome to you as we begin today our readings for the month of December on Cultivating Voices Live Poetry. It is hard to believe that we have cycled, that we've cycled through uh, another year and we're at our last month of poetry readings. And as we've become accustomed to starting this fall, we begin every month with our poets focus where we pick a word and or a theme and look at the constellation of that word through poetry. Well, the word constellation uh, favors and figures in quite well today because our poet's focus for the month of December on Cultivating Voices Live Poetry is stars. Well, we've already assembled an incredible star-filled sky of poets to read during our open mic featured series. And we, and if you're joining us now, uh, we are assembling a wait list. We'll go to on the half hour, about 90 minutes, we'll get in as many people as we can. And again, I'm so grateful to have all of you stars joining me, your host today, Sandy Yanone, for our Poets Focus on the theme of stars. If you're listening uh, on Facebook, and of course, those of you who might be listening on the recording after, we have hundreds of people who watch the recordings during the week. A reminder that you too can join us live here in Zoom. Uh, the first of the of the first three, the first three Sundays or Mondays, depending on what time zone you're in, uh, for our readings, and we welcome welcome folks from all around the globe, all the time zones. A little bit about our a little bit about our format. So those of you who might be watching for the first time can get acclimated. We have 12 features for today. Uh, our features read up to five minutes a piece. Uh, if we have time for at the end of our round of 12 who have come and signed up uh, early, and you typically need to be here uh, at the quarter hour before to, to probably get one of those slots, um, after we do take some readings on the wait list. And for that, it's one poem, relatively short, so we can get as many folks in. So let's get, let's get started with our stars for today. Well, our first star joining us is Sylvia Clare, and Sylvia will be joined, followed by Leslie Trape. Welcome. Thank you. But this is not one I wrote. I shall explain more about it in a minute. <clears throat> it's called Stars. When I look at you, I am lost, empty of self, full of wonder, smaller than a thought. Compared to you, I am nothing, and the things I know are less than a fleck of the great mystery. The past, our past, lies in the stars. It is embedded in our memory, in our very flesh. Mariners in life, we navigate at night, and when we dream, we dream of stars. A great start to the reading. Sylvia, do you have another to join, or is that our kickoff for today? I'm gonna to make that the kickoff, because I think it'd be really nice if we could get a lot more people reading today, and I don't want to take up the, work, the, the meeting, if that's okay. Oh, absolutely. It's a perfect kickoff poem. And again, in time immemorial, everyone, poets 
have contemplated the cosmos and the, and the stars. And uh, what a great beginning to the reading from Sylvia Clare. We move next to Leslie Trainer, who will be followed by Billy Brown. Hi. Um, during lockdown, there was a supernova event. Um, so I kind of combined the two. Um, and if you actually see the poem, it's a strange shape. I'm going to read it now. And it's called Supernova Ignites a Lockdown Night. Time cannot rewind. Stop the destruction painted on a night sky. Memorial candles dancing on the arrow of time. I grieve for the brightest, knowing it died young, its death traumatic. This disruption defies the laws of physics. I have nowhere to be, nothing to do. Life is slowed down within the matrix. Matter, visible, controllable. Time pushed apart on repeat. But nature shouts the lie. Seasons call me out. I am shooting towards my supernova moment, blazing and burnt out. Thank you so much, Leslie. Wow. That is a supernova of a supernova poem. Oh, I feel like I could, I've honestly, uh, at one point I had a manuscript called Planetariums for the Blind. And it had tons of kind of celestial poetry in it. Uh, uh, we could probably fill up a whole year of poems inspired, you know, inspired by the, by the divine above the stars. Oh, what a great beginning. Thank you so much. We move to Billy Brown, followed by Yeva Johnson. Can you hear me okay? Perfectly. You sound Thank great. Thank you. Thank you. I have a new poem and I have a song not new. Um, this poem is called Stars. A young boy, I photographed stars from atop our garage on Noski. Acrux, Almach, Alner, Aspidiski. One night, <clears throat> excuse me, one night I left the aperture open for hours, captured Betelgeuse, Polaris, Regulus, Arcturus. Dancing curves proved Earth's rotation. Aldebaran, Alsafna, Alfaraz, Menkalinen. A streak of light on film I thought was Sputnik circling the globe. Later, resigned myself to it being a meteorite or just a jet plane. Two syllable stars, Algol, Castor, Pollux, Hadar, Hamal, Izar, Sabic, Spica, Markab, Markeb, Merak, Mirfak. Three syllable stars, Akernar, Aljana, Alfeca, Arcturus. Canopus, El Tannen, Formal Hout. These stars I now name are from an internet list of the 92 brightest from our own sun to Akrab, the dimmest. And uh, as is often the case when a, uh, a theme is announced for one of these readings, a song comes immediately to mind. <clears throat> Don't let the stars get in your eyes. Don't let the moon break your heart. Love blooms at night. In daylight it dies. 
Don't let the stars get in your eyes. Don't keep your heart from me, for someday I'll return. You know you're the only one I'll ever love. Don't let the stars get in your eyes. Don't let the moon break your heart. Love blooms at night. In daylight it dies. Don't let the stars get in your eyes. Thank you. Oh. Woo! <laughs> well, that's one of our stars joining us from Albuquerque, New Mexico. The illuminating Billy Brown. Thank you so much, Billy. I love it when you come and sing and share a song with us. Fabulous. Thank you. Well, our next star, uh, you've 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 heard Yeva play the flute, share like amazing poetry with us. It is always, always, always a pleasure to hear from Yeva Johnson, and then Yeva will be followed by Marjorie Maddox. Thank you, Sandy. I was going to just read the poems, but since it's your mom's birthday, I will have a little music before and after like I traditionally do. I have two poems for you all today. Let me know if you can hear me, because it's technical. The first poem is Chart Vitae. Start with your mouth open and breathe through your skin until the quake rumbles out from your center through you and pins a pinch of essence to the furthest most corner of the Milky Way. Then turn left. Bend down, way down, a foot rise rather than a handstand in space, and find that beautiful green-blue marble bauble dangling from the sun's nearest earlobe, which beckons you. Come, come enjoy the life that bubbles and rips through cold eons, light years of dust and ever more dust. Join the dance with all we who will become ashes, then sit. Your eye is not the limit and you can see skyways and rivers, every ocean current, a detour on the path to your next beloved. Jump, jump, jump again, pound a hole in the earth, scoop a palm of water and sprinkle it over your right shoulder then follow the scent of water now you're on the track bound to encounter more life back from galaxy's edge to something that feels more like home and the second poem uh, which i wrote for today is called light year sparks Giant stars glow, burn hotter than our own solar center, explode into supernovas, dissipate energy into the universe at galactically youthful ages. What if there's no other life out there? What if they don't reach us in time? Perhaps our old wise son had patience enough to nurture life leaking all over our tiny emerald jade planet on the outskirts of the Milky Way. We look, peer with scopes, we shout and broadcast out various signals, but in deep space, we never hear an echo or response. We keep murmurating, never appreciating the sacredness. 
Can we sylphs learn to keep each other company, make peace, live in harmony with earthly vibes? <laughs> Thank you. That's Yeva Johnson, everyone. And thanks for the shout out to my mom who's joined us today. Actually, it's her birthday and it's pretty milestone birthday. So glad that she could join us uh, and to hear these poems today about the stars. She loves stargazing, who doesn't? Well, again, I wanna remind you all that, please use the chat as well to send your uh, greetings and appreciation for the poetry that you're hearing today. Um, I know I always say respectfully, and I know I don't really have to say that in this group, but I, I I do just to be remind, remindful, mindful of that. And wow, what a reading already. Well, if you were not at a recent new book showcase for the month of November, you missed an incredible reading by Marjorie Maddox. And I wanna encourage you and remind you all that we have all the recordings of our, of our readings on our Facebook and our YouTube page. So do check those out if you miss a week and or if you just wanna relive the magic. And with that, Marjorie Maddox will be followed by Colin Dardis. Thank you, Sandy, and happy birthday to Sandy's mom. Um, and this is a, a poem that I have never read yet, um, relatively new, and it's a Sestina. And um, it reminds me of the talk that we were having before we all started here about um, how the pandemic has brought us together and how the night sky brings us together as well. Apart together, pandemic night sky. As always, the elliptical orbit of you is no star-studded light show of me. Just gravitational pull between wish you were here and here. Blips in the night sky that sink our breathing. Which moon best mimics isolation? Of course, new moon moves in with ancient dirge orbits absence while black backdrop of sky wanes and waxes, its slight punctuations of light, mere crescents of consistent inconsistency. Here, not here, gains meaning when gravity gives up its ghost to float us to sky. Gravity's loyalty to earth abandoned for a close up of moon and its unromantic glow of distance there to here. Still, memory holds us tight in intersecting orbits. Half a country away, and the familiar patterns that light your face light mine. You argue the skies are different, but really what matters is not the sky's design, but the reason we're looking. Gravitational pull, still pulling. Despite the miles lack of light, weather, terrain, pandemic, moon is still moon, star, star. No matter how many times our longing orbits separate states of being, you there, not here, defines lonely, but not always. Your here is mine when constellations connect each sky enough alike to keep linked even disparate orbits. This is the way of the body's gravity. Blood pumps, bones grow, all because the moon and stars motion. Look, follow the tides of light to love, still here ebbing across this unlit country of fear. Mark that on the map of here, now. So what if the overblown romance of moon burns cold? 
what we're viewing each night is sky that's more than a summary of stars, gravity the give and takes that keeps us each in orbit. Praise then to the orbit of us, to sky and light, to loyal moon and gravity, to each nightly map of home, of here. Thanks. Oh, I'm so glad you brought that poem. Oh, exquisite. Forgot the title of it, so I had have trouble finding it. <laughs> Ooh, that is the celestial poetry of Marjorie Maddox. A reminder, you have joined us for our weekly Cultivating Voices live poetry today always the first Sunday of the month. It's our poet's focus. And today our focus are the stars. Stars is our focus. And oh, the stars have come out today for sure. Amazing poetry. I remember here, Cultivating Voices, live poetry. We will hear next from Colin Dardis, followed by Geraldine O'Kane. Hi all, thanks Andy. Uh, just a few hours ago, we were at a Vincent van Gogh exhibition and you know his paintings, The Starry Night, but there was a quote uh, from Vincent I thought was quite appropriate for tonight. It says, I don't know anything with certainty, but seeing the stars makes me dream. Which I thought was really nice, just wanted to share that with you. Uh, so two short poems, uh, well, one short poem, one medium life poem. Uh, this one was originally recorded for the great podcast, Eat the Storms. If anyone knows it, Irish pod poetry podcast, check it out. Hosted by star Damien Donnelly. Uh, it's just home for stars. Every star needs to fall into a constellation. That blessed union of imaginary lines, crafting a framework of belonging. The swan, the harp, the hunter, the bear, the lattice, the cradle, the makeshift bed in which to dream, the persistent home, resistant against all comets, a corner of the sky to call home and be called to. And then, thank you. And then the next poem, I think this was written in a workshop by Olive Broderick, uh, an Irish poet as well, definitely recommend, hopefully uh, some of you might know her, check out her work. Um, we've been to a few of her workshops that she runs in Darn Patrick in County Darn here in Northern Ireland, and she's always really inspirational, love her work and I really get good poems out of her workshop, this is one of them. The sky is a dance floor. The sky is a dance floor with an audience of billions and no edge. Still you enter, and still the spotlight with all the constellations with the secrets sewn into the night. I have no charts, no, not the steps, but you have already taken the lead. My eyes follow, my unlensed eye, my telescopic eye, my TV eye. Take me. Take my useless feet and waltz me across the floor. Turn me through the window and show me earth as you see it. A poor reflection of yourself about tale or destination. Earth's sad dance is only a circle and everyone here joins in. For once, let me touch the outside of a galaxy we have only trapped inside books. Yeah, let me realize the infinity of my atoms beyond the century of my life. Take me with you, Comet, as we move past planets and fall asleep behind the sun. Thanks, folks. Nice. Oh, my gosh. I am just, I'm overtaken by the light of these poems, the starlight of these poems. You know, uh, you had that line, Colin had that line about infinity, and I, I just feel the infiniteness of the beauty of the poetry that's being brought to us 
today, tonight. I, I know for some of you, the, the stars may be out above you uh, at this moment. Uh, oh, astounding. I love this. Well, next we'll hear from Geraldine O'Kane, followed by Swango. Yeah, thanks for, for having me. Um, I'm going to read two short poems. Um, the first one, Venus in my living room. I was wearing the creativity bracelet you bought me the night that Venus and Mars were visible alongside the moon. And a girl wanted to sing strange fruit to the president elect. The same night, a butterfly came into our living room and a single speck of glitter was caught hanging on the coattail of a cobweb, twirling, visible and wondrous. And the second one is called Alone. It's a high one. She steps out into the night, glances at the sky. Starry and moonless is always a disappointment. The first breath startles. She feels it travel straight to her lungs, momentarily freezing the air sacs. It takes a second breath to acclimatize to the depths of cold appearing from her mouth as a thick white fog. A few Christmas trees still lit chatter to each other in code. Her footsteps seem louder in the absence of pigeon coo, car engines and eternal roadworks. Shop fronts have become graffiti galleries. A woman's face, colored yin yang. Take off your clothes, we need to talk. Be kind. She makes out a high vis vest and headlamp coming towards her. A dedicated jogger from the outskirts. Locals. Hoods up, heads down, try to blend into the shadows made by street lighting. She puts a glove hand to her mouth, her, to her mask worn for heat rather than protection, pulls her hood down a little further, carries on into the starry night. The yawning sun steals the moon stage on the dus dusky winter dawn. Absolutely beautiful. That's the poetry of Geraldine O'Keefe. What I love about the reading today uh, is that it's a you know it's a reminder that all of us are under the same stars. We absolutely share that experience from our unique from our unique corner of corner of the sky to quote one of the, our poets for today. And uh, it's a humbling thing to know. It's a humbling thing to know. And yet it's a comfort to know that from each of our different squares here, the stars are always with us and we are always with the stars. Well, that is our poet's focus for today. The word is stars. You are joining us on Cultivating Voices Live Poetry as we move through this amazing constellation of featured poets. And our next joining us is Fungo, followed by Harvey Sass. I'm so glad you're here with us today. Thank you. I'm happy I'm here. <laughs> Uh, greetings, everybody. I hope everyone is doing well. Uh, so um, I'm not going to waste too much time talking. I'm just going to get back to the poetry. Uh, so I wrote this poem for, um, uh, for all of us here. Um, we wake up uh, every morning uh, and goes out to do something uh, that makes someone happy. Keep doing that. It's amazing. So uh, I just wrote this now. Um, it's titled Stars We Are. Stars we are, shining our warmth throughout the freezing nights, vanishing with the rise of the scorching sun. We pour out our pain, they clip in ululate. Our darkest days pass with checks in the mail, or polls that pay us because they enjoyed how we described great grandfather's death. We are broken inside, yet standing tall because we know that growth is all we do. Stagnation is the field where darkness breathes. Poem. So, um, 
The next poem I'm going to read, um, uh, I wrote it on the 3rd of December. It's a new poem. Uh, it's not titled yet, so I hope you enjoy it. Put the phone down. Leave the avatars behind. Break away from these glowing calves. They were not created with safe words. Meet yourself in the middle, maybe converse a little. Let the children guide you, their hearts are pure. Babylon hasn't captured them yet. They be in their own planets, creating for the sake, seeking no profit, just natural growth, the joy of being with no gimmicks, no images to uphold, no one's dreams to live, and no mom's expectations to meet. Put the bottle down. You'd rather sell it than buy it. Alcohol ain't your friend and no, I ain't a preacher. Yet in a capitalist system, I want your eyes to continuously run from left to right as your brain renders to the best of this ability. What your perspective makes out of the stories I write. I want to see you formulate a waste disposal system that complain about pollution. I want to see you abracadabra that bitch into dollars enough to elevate you above survival mode so you can lend a hand to those coming up, free the beds and prove to the keepers that gets a cup of sand at the beach when the squad flies. Peace, y'all. Oh, that is the energy of Swango here on Cultivating Voices, live poetry. Our poets focus on stars. And uh, as I, I mean, each of you are your own truly unique star. And uh, yet when we come together and create that constellation of poetry, oh, there is nothing like that sweet music. There is nothing like it. Oh my gosh. I want to I want to take a I want to take a page out of Swango's book and and remind you all that it's a perfect opportunity also to use the prompt of our first reading of the month on a, a word that we'll focus on as a prompt for you to generate your own poem. Of course, feel free. We love it when you bring poems that you've that you've written based on based on the prompt of the reading for the poet's focus. Thank you so much um, for that, Swango, and thanks for the, giving me the opportunity and reminder to share with folks that it's a perfectly great way to generate a new poem for you and then for all of us. It's a joy, really. Well, next we'll hear from Harvey Sauce, followed by Patricia Kerrigan. Welcome, Harvey. Thank you. Can you hear me? You sound fabulous. Ah, well, um, not bad for an old uh, white dwarf star going over, I suppose. <laughs> we'll see if I have any, any light left to shed. Uh, this one is called Once at Key Largo. That was the summer we bummed the keys, Key Largo to Key West. Offshore the 35 gods of thunder, their names ancient, multisyllabic, and unpronounceable, thwacked shuttlecocks of shooting stars over the stretched net of the horizon, careful as you and I are never to step on sea anemones. As always, you danced a bit ahead while I, less balletic, strenuously avoided tripping over a loose carpet of continental drift where we forded shallows to a Bogart meets Bacall beach. Recessed schools of small fry, high IQ as fish go, smartly following our pas de deux, detaying away from our footsteps. Did I mention how many stars there were? More than it would take to pin a final solution on the sleeve of every bewailer at the wailing wall kept us up all night counting pictographic highlights clustered thick as blisters on our sunburned backs. Lying together, Siamese on a sweat soaked mummy bag, just wide enough for the two of us. After a late night snack of graham crackers and orange crush, I drew with a tent peg on still damp sand, a rough star map of constellations that might be seen with the naked eye those I could remember and identify, 
seeking amidst Leo, Pisces, the water bearer, classical signets of high power, an unoccupied as yet unmythologized space to which future stargazers might assign us pride of place as the lovers, you and I. And she never got to hear that one. Um, second one is, I mean, every star has probably obscured some other not so celestial body. Uh, this one is called Secret Life of Sidekicks. Ventriloquists had best beware of their dummies. Headliners, their chums lurking in the subscript. Just when you think they're satisfied with second place with daffodils instead of roses after a Kentucky Derby race, that they have no expectations above their pay grade, boom, they burst into your room, guns blazing with live ammo, then it's, oh, Cisco, a two poncho. On posters, it seems, sidekicks are always the other guys, the also with, as in also with Jay Silverheels as Tonto, also with Leo Carrillo as Pancho, Bert Ward as Dick Grayson, Robin. There's not a mother's son among them who doesn't want to be a Batman, a number one. They want to be seen as their mothers see them, GYNs having assured Mrs. Silverheels, Mrs. Carrillo, that they had birthed A-listers, not B, after hard pushing that outrivaled the exertions of any marquee-worthy mom. And as regards Mrs. Grayson, a son more deserving than the caped crusader of a hero's welcome at Comic-Con. Second bananas, generally viewed by us as fungible, dream of fanzines dedicated to their every move, whether on screen or in the bathroom with a need to be listed and paid as protagonists, building in them like water pressure in an overheated junker. What numero unos who want to keep top billing should know is that one of these days it's going to blow, the next Lou Costello already planning to nip the next Bud Abbott in the bud. Thank you. That is the ever, ever bright, ever bright Harvey Sauce. Thank you so much. You are a light. You are a star. Thank you much. Absolutely. Now, if only some publishers and, uh, and editors would, uh, would see the light, as it were. <laughs> Well, we continue, all we can do is continue to write those poems, have faith, have faith in our, in our own light. And we certainly do. Thanks for bringing those poems today. I love them. Next, oh, you know, the star of the brownstones, the star of the brownstone, it's Patricia Kerrigan. Thank you for joining us, followed by David Bridges. Hi, thank you again. And wonderful star, wonderful galaxy of poets, poets here. Stardust is everywhere. Speak of the devil, I'm meaning two poems and the first poem meaning is Stardust. As a kid, the daughter listened to Nat King Cole believed every word set to music. Her mother would be dusting, listening, forgetting what marriage did to her. The daughter dreamed of nightingales, purple dusk, garden walls, and a paradise where roses grew under stardust skies. She thought stars would shine when she fell in love but pipe dreams cracked with age. Nightingales got bored, took flight. Purple dusk faded into gray clouds. Roses died. Gardens became junkyards or real estate. Stars got old, retired to yesteryear. Non-existent love left no stardust. A daughter was better off alone 
a lesson learned from her mother. Second one, twilight time inspired by the platters. Twilight casts spells, scatters pink, orange, red, gold onto short waved blue sky. With colors in turmoil, it must hurry, announce day's end. Quiet, gradual, not to disturb sun's departure. Blue to deepen night's shadow and a curtain scattered in stars crowned by moon. I cast spells, scatter manifestations draped in pink, orange, red, gold onto short waved blue incense. With colors in turmoil, I must hurry, announce intentions at day's end. Quiet, gradual, not to disturb sun's departure. Blue to deepen your shadow and a bed scattered in stars, crowned in moon. Thank you. Happy holidays, everybody. Oh. Thank you. Mute this. Oh, that is one of the galaxies. <coughs> one of the galaxies. Patricia Kerrigan, thank you so much. Oh, and I, I love the, evoke, the, the evocation of stardust. Oh. Hoagie, yeah, fabulous. Well, we're winding up for our features here on Cultivating Voices Live Poetry. We are just blazing through the sky with these poems today on the theme, on our poet's focus on stars. Our, our next featured poet joining us is David Bridges, and then we'll be followed by Glenda Jamino. Mm, uh, thank you, Sandy. Um, I'm kind of starstruck by all the poetry today and tonight. Uh, it's been great um, being saturated with a, a thematic uh, um, event of poetry. Um, my poem, this poem goes where um, stars go to die, but uh, that's only uh, part of the story. Black hole breakthrough. A fractured spectacle. Uh, this phrase is from Seeing Through the World, Jean Gebser, and Integral Consciousness by uh, Jeremy uh, Johnson. <clears throat> Every true theorist is a kind of tamed metaphysicist, Albert Einstein. It was an historic scientific feat. 12 years, 200 scientists worldwide. Telescopes in Arizona, Hawaii, Mexico, Chile, Spain, Antarctica, France, and Greenland. Eight radio telescopes were aimed at one part of the Milky Way galaxy, another 54 million light years away in supermassive cosmic space called the Event Horizon Telescope, based in Waterloo, Ontario, at the Perimeter Institute. Scientists hope analyzing two years of data, the black hole shape and shadow, will corroborate to Albert Einstein's theory of general relativity. Black holes mysteriously suck in dead collapsed stars to boundaries of no return, matter destroyed by the gravitational vortex. Is it God's graveyard? On luminous horizon of immeasurable mystery, I stand on the cosmic doorstep with non-local spiritual archetype companions, one foot below on earth, another rises above to the heavens, seeking levels of reality from unseen dimensions. I invoke the Egyptian high priest, Amenen, who is master 
of the secrets of heaven, wears leopard skin cape whose spots are painted with stars. Ancient wise voices remind, look beyond, past the physical realm, not to gaze out, but in. Live the dynamic dance of twin worlds, spirit matter web. A psychonaut whose telescope cannot measure marvel. Only intuition sees psychic quest for wholeness, opens to raven's primal prayer, reborn stars circle of light saturates, sanctifies interminglings. Infinity embraces imagination's galaxy to know more, to see and hear more, dwells in a fathomless depth, interior being, whose mediating language breathes blessedness into the real, speaking to the world to nowhere and everywhere. <coughs> I love the expansiveness of these poems today on our, our poets focus on the theme stars. Uh, if you were actually here in my house, you'd see I've got these, I've got around all in different places, these little tableaus of starry things. And in my living room, I've got some wooden stars up on the walls. In my kitchen, I've got all these metallic stars and moons and things like that. And, and so, and of course, outside are the stars, you know, and, and so it's always been an image for me. It's always been an image for me. And I'm, and obviously one that has inspired poets for time immemorial. Well, we are two are, as I said, we are just blazing through our reading. It's going to be, we have time for all our, we're going to have time for all our, all our waiting list folks. Let's close out our features for today, though, with wonderful Glenda Chimino. Thank you very much for being with us today. Hi, everybody. I'm going to do three short ones tonight. The first one I've kind of reconstructed because I lost it before. See if I can find it. How do I get to it? Okay, here we go now. I have to, okay, here it is. It's called Printing Stars Without a License in Florida. That year we made our own Christmas cards, gathering star fruit from the tree in the garden of our rented cottage in the Sarasota paradise. The same tree where I once saw a large green iguana, no more native to Florida than we were, flip herself with her tail up six feet onto a branch and climb out of sight to the top of that tree. I thought of her surviving on star fruit. As I cut the fruit in half, my daughter and I sitting at an outdoor table in the sun, pressing them into colored inks, making perfect red, green, and blue star shapes on the white cards. Christmas places, Christmas cards to go to places we could not go to, places where winter actually comes. The second one is a sad one. Um, there's always happiness and sadness in our stars. The light from dead stars. Last night I lay on my side of the bed, your side of the bed, empty and cold, while the open fires and shards of light across the ceiling sky, like distant galaxies of shining dust, and the iridescent stars you hung for me when you loved me glowed all night. I felt myself drifting, drifting away from the stars to the outer reaches of the universe, through the impossible vastness of space to the edges of entropy, slowly spinning in vertiginous freefall without you forever. Guided only by the ever dimming light of your once bright love, shining for me still like a dead star in the darkness. And the last one is Epitaph for a Lover of Earth. And it quotes uh, Angela Silesius, man what you love you will become at second birth. God, if you love God, earth, if you love earth. 
When I die, as all beings must, and my earthly body returns to the dust from which it was made, and my starry spirit to the cosmic esplanade from which the divine spark came, remember that my true self has no name, was never born, never lived, and never died, but dreams on forever in a world untried. As my body's eyes close to the temporal, and my spirit's eyes open to the eternal, I know that I will again experience release, the ecstasy of great love and peace. So when I die, let there be no sadness. Celebrate the whole with heartfelt gladness. For death and birth are doors through which we pass, seeing only dimly through the glass. No, friends, be lighthearted. You see, I have run the course laid out for me. I have seen and loved and learned so much how we can heal the world with a lover's touch. I hope that you will think it great that I have been and create for me a song, plant a flower or a tree, or do some kind act to remember me. Thank you. Wow. Thank you so much, Glenda. Oh my gosh. Well, we've had our first constellation of our 12 features for today. Uh, just astounding astounding work as 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 a, as we traveled through kind of the cosmos and and the variations on how stars affect influence and inspire us and how they kind of hold our our hope our sorrow our aspirations well we are fortunate today we can move wonderfully to our onto our waiting list and hear a few more poems by our fabulous members or or them reading poems by others of course that's also applicable here and we're going to start off it's one poem a piece and we'll start off with Matt Mooney followed by some quanto. Sandy, I'm looking at you through a star. Uh, I'm matching your stars. Uh, Mary, Mary purchased this during the weekend, beautiful, be beautifully crafted in wood. So oh. we have a star for the Christmas. Oh, thank you. Now, here we go. Uh, skylight to the stars. Skylight of pine like a picture frame, only I of my sleepless musing. What strikes me at this hour of dreams is the single star that looks at me from the depths of our lovely universe. I'd love to know if the builders charged for your beacon light so gifted. As I lie on my back, my thoughts of black slip away with the blind I've lifted. No, I think of today by the river Rhone and hills so high with slopes of trees, where hosts of village houses stand, San Gamier, its square with cafes there a fruit shop of reds and yellows, a church of stone standing all alone, its walls being cleansed by craftsmen. While, alas, I lie and look on high and muse on the higher heavens, I have found it wise to think of time, for the dawn has stolen my star away and all that's left to me today is a frame with a bright blue canvas. That is the ever, ever Right, Matt Mooney. Thank you, Matt, for starting us off on our poems for those, our bonus round of poetry. 
those poems that we don't know that we're waiting for, but are necessary for us to hear. Perfect, perfect poem. Well, next we will hear from some Corinto. I'm so glad you're here today. Wow, can't wait to hear your contribution to our theme. Thank you. Uh, I was not actually aware of the theme, so I had to hurry and <laughs> and look for a poem that has sprinkles of stars here and there. Uh, and this is the one I pulled out. For a second, I took my eyes away from the sky. And in just that seemingly infinite nothingness of time, I missed it. I missed you and God logged in a gaze like conjoined spirits in a millisecond that lasted for days. I missed God smile and blink for a while to leave butterfly earthquakes in your childlike eyes. I guess I was distracted by the reflection of the sun inside them. I was studying to see if the heat could withstand the stare down when each single ray walks down inside them and finds a raging fire unlike the sun could ever dream. When for the first time the sun beholds its reflection in anything else other than water, as if seeing its vision through this mirror made of pure diamonds. Then I noticed you smile wide and I thought that was odd. <laughs> And the cloud covered the sun like an eclipse. It was God. That is how I noticed God's reflection on your strawberry lips. I turned around and was amazed. They say, look away when God appears. But I took in God's shapeless form and felt myself blessed with the entire unwritten infinite cosmos. I was taken to the utmost where the only other beings were you and me. I remember thinking if God does this every morning, then give us a siren warning or something. Because when God blinks, God's eyelashes will cause highway crashes as comets fall from the dark night. Because when God winks, it leaves the whole universe less intact and shakes the Milky Way so hard that it gushes into black holes and leaves the sky lactose intolerant. If God does this every day, then this planet is in trouble. <laughs> you know, I've already dreamed you suckling a child who won't as yet reveal her face in my dreams. Her beauty is still being put together from the veins of medicinal leaves. I think I've told you that I've never actually held pearls in my palms, but I suspect that your eyes are pearls. But if God granted me a chance to watch over them tonight, I'll probably wait for you to sleep, then pop them gently like shooting stars out of their constellation, tip them from their sockets into my hands, leave you blind for an eternity, and keep staring at them in my palms until they reveal exactly, exactly what you saw in me. Because you stared at me expansively and expensively. I'll be too slow to remove my eyes and place them there next to yours until I've memorized all the maps of all the places in the world that those pearls in my, in my palms have dreamed to see. I would even go back to your past. See every lucky mat that heard the song of those beautiful feet, feet that hold up your resilient bones. I would treat those pearls like a pair of crystal balls, reading inside them the future and divining in them the pain that you have seen, feeling the texture of your language of sorrow, such that if we speak again tomorrow, I can choose my words according to your every emotion, carefully every curve of it and learn what hurts you in the gut sense of words so as never to punch you there even with a mistaken elbow thank you oh Woo! for you have just pulled that one down from the sky you know not planning to read it bravo bravo wow that's some corinto what a poem Oh, thank you so much. And now we hear from Catherine Ronan, followed by Linda Crawford. Hi, everyone. Uh, we've created our own universe here tonight, I think, with all the star themed 
great team, by the way, Sandy, great team. And as we say in Ireland, don't come vote, uh, as we say in Ireland, follow that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so my poem is, is very short in comparison, and it's called Stars Are Distant Suns. He wrote me a love song on five strings. Sixth one forever broken in bed. His ex continues to sing as a star-crossed lover. Headless chords fall over themselves as autumn moves through spring. Copernicus comes calling in the rain. Heavens do stand still. Pope Paul burned Bruno for less than my flaming gloves for him. Planet tongue in my pocket, I dance around his revolving sun. Oh, I dance around his revolving sun. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Catherine. Mm. Follow that, right? <laughs> Linda Crawford. And then I'm going to share a poem, and then we'll have a final poem to close us out for today. So, oh man, this Linda, is I came up with you here. Way, but this is very powerful. <laughs> Anyhow, I, I will join in there. Why not? Uh, I had written this poem totally unrelated to this event. But because of an article I saw in the New Yorker that I have yet to finish reading, because it is very long, about um, geoscientists exploring whether they should dim the sun to cool the earth. And it sent me on a tangent. So, dimming the sun. 4.6 billion years old. I have yet to absorb this number. And it will change. I have yet to fully know the nature of ancient rays, how I revolve around their heat and shine, why I am here, why my home is here. How many are we now? Eight billion? How that will change. Are we as knowing now as those who bled or bodies, leeches in the fullness of healing until with wisdom we stopped? Or just as knowing as those still frozen in cryogenic thoughts who hope to live again, to eat and sing with those yet to be born? Are we as knowing as those who kindly drain our blood cleanse and cycle it in quick time through our diabetic bodies, replace our hearts with those of pigs, and what? Transplant our eyes with others' corneas to make us see clearly. Each practitioner always right until we and they are wrong. All right, keep seeking wings to fly, not melted wax and feathers gone from Icarus who died in want to touch our ever brilliant sun. We've made the ripstop nylon strong, felt the promise of freedom's wind. Yet, so far, we have not come so far. I saw a headline, dimming the sun to cool the earth, and so, I wrote today what tomorrow will surely be wrong. Eight billion stars and millennia from now, our dust and starry eyes will squint at the bright sun, reflect on our ever urge to dim and laugh at our fated folly. Thank you. Woo! Wow. Oh my gosh. This reading is just is just bringing it, bringing it out of everybody today. Oh, thank you so much, Linda Crawford and and really all the stars tonight and today. Well, I'm gonna uh, share a poem. And as I said, today is my mom's 
she'll be okay if I tell you. It's, today is her 80th birthday, and she is with us today, uh, as she is most Sundays. So I definitely wanted to read a poem for her. And um, there was a poem in, in my book, both for women that I thought I was going to read, but then I thought, oh no, I'm going to pull out a poem that doesn't, that I never ever read. It was a found poem that I wrote many, many years ago after reading the book called The Stars by H.A. Ray. And if, if you are familiar with H.A. Ray, H.A. Ray also wrote another series of books called Curious George. So this is a children's book about the stars that was written in 1952. And there's all these amazing illustrations of the constellations. It's a beautiful, beautiful book and I love it and that I found it. Um, and you can actually still buy it. It was re it's been reprinted. And so the found poem about the stars that I want to share is really the introduction to the book. And because it was written in 1952, it is dated quite a bit and I didn't change the wording. So you'll notice something about gender. Um, you'll notice, of course, it's pre, it's, you know, it's, it's pre the moon landing and all of that but I hope you'll enjoy this found poem. And of course, I hope my mom will enjoy it. From H.A. Ray's The Stars. The space age is upon us. Rockets are leaving our globe at speeds unheard of only a few years ago to orbit earth, moon, and sun any day now man may visit the moon or may have done so as you read this. We have sent space probes to Venus and Mars and words like orbit and satellite are picked up by children in the nursery. And how has all this affected the age old pleasure of watching the starry sky? Has it made stargazing obsolete? It has not, and it never will. For we live on this earth and always shall. After the day is gone, we shall go out, breathe deeply, and look up. And there the stars will be, unchanged, unchangeable, even from the moon or Mars, or from Pluto, the outermost planet. The stars look the same as they do from Earth. Night after night, they are there. Well, that's my found poem from H.A. Ray's book, The Stars. And uh, I really am grateful to my mom. I think of her as that last line. You know, that constancy of night after night, there, there. She's my North Star. So happy birthday and thank you. And I love you. And thanks for being here today and all the Sundays that you show up. Well, we're going to end with a poem by one of my star poets. And uh, I hope many of you, many of yours, she actually participated uh, in the tribute to Evan Boland um, uh, in 2020 after Evan Boland's passing that Poetry Ireland uh, put on uh, in, mem in memoriam. And that is the poet uh, here from America, Marie Howe. We're gonna be showing you a clip of Marie reading her poem, Singularity. And then I'll return with some closing remarks and some shout outs to all of you. Here's Marie Howe yes. with her poem, Singularity. Yes. Everyone, I'm going to share my screen, I hope. Don, may I share my screen? You should be able to. 
Um, okay. I think I am going to be able to do this. I'm going to rewind so we're right at the beginning and open up my screen and let's see if this works for everyone. Do you sometimes want to wake up to the singularity we once were? So compact, nobody needed a bed or food or money. Nobody hiding in the school bathroom or home alone, pulling open the drawer where the pills are kept. For every atom belonging to me as good belongs to you. Remember, there was no nature, no them, no elephant grieves her calf, or if the coral reef feels pain. Trashed oceans don't speak English or Farsi or French. Would that we could wake up to what we were when we were ocean, and before that, to when sky was earth and animal was energy and rock was liquid and stars were space and space was not at all, nothing. Before we came to believe humans were so important, before this awful loneliness. Can molecules recall it? What once was before anything happened? No I, no we, no one, no was, no verb, no noun, only a tiny, tiny dot brimming with is, 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 all, everything, home. Thank you. Yes. That is the amazement that is Marie Howe yes. reading her poem, Singularity, a poem inspired uh, by the poet, uh, by the poet, well, by the astronomer. I think of astronomers and poets as symbiotic beings, actually. Uh, but that is her poem, Singularity, inspired by the astronomer Stephen Hawking. Well, we have traveled the cosmos today, my friends, and our poets focus our tribute to the stars. Uh, with the stars today. And those stars that we heard from included at the top of the hour, Sylvia Clare, Leslie Trainer, Billy Brown, Yeva Johnson, Marjorie Maddox, Colin Dardis, Geraldine O'Kane, Svango, Harvey Sauce, Patricia Kerrigan, David Bridges, Glenda Chimino, and as we rounded out to our bonus round of the galaxy, we heard from Matt Mooney, some Corto, Catherine Ronan, Linda Crawford, a poem for my mom on her birthday. And of course, we ended with Marie Howe's Singularity through the generosity and thoughtfulness of Kim Ports Parsons. Folks, would you please, please unmute and show your appreciation for this starry night of poetry. Oh my gosh. Thank you for the blessing. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, that's, that's good.
Thank you for your songs, your wisdom, your words, your light, your brightness, your brightness. You all shine so brilliantly and I'm grateful, so grateful to have each and every one of you in our audience also um, in our audience as also in the our group cultivating voices live poetry uh, i want to invite you back next week for our new book showcase and our final reading for the month of december will be our holiday poetry open house or as i affectionately call it our Ho, po, oh, reading, where we'll gather together for some good cheer in our poetry open mic format. Thank you so much for being here today, everybody. I wish you well. Um, as I always say, as I always say at the end of every single week, take very good care, take especially good care of your beloveds and of course keep writing your poems to the stars this is sandy you know for cultivating voices live poetry with a most special shout out to my mom happy birthday and thank you for joining us on your birthday and we'll see you all next time Let's sing to listen.